tis done. Well, almost. Anyway, stay tuned and all will be revealed. Right, welcome back. So you can see now I've got the portal, I suppose. I'm trying to think of a better way of phrasing it. Um, ready for the water to go in. Now, you may also notice that I've put some dark wash on there, and that is the usual null oil that I use. Now, it doesn't matter it's gloss because it's going to be covered with the resin, so I'm not worried about that. I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes, and um, then it's down to sealing things up. Now, you'll know, notice this isn't flat, and that's going to be a bit of a job to seal it up. So what I will be using is some black tack and um, I only need to come up so far. I don't need to come up massively high. Um, so it'll probably only have, I don't know, three, four millimeters in there. And you have to build that up um, two millimeters maximum at a time, which we'll look at in a bit. So I will get the blue tack on there and then get that blocked over with some acetate and then tape over the top. So you can hopefully see the edge of this, um, but also you can see the sealing process I'm gonna go through for that. All right, catch you shortly. Right, there we go. So you can see now I've put a big blob of black tack over that, and there's the acetate which goes up to there. You could probably just make the top out of that. And then I've put sellotape under there, rubbed it down my finger now, both sides, tucked it up underneath, and then I've put two further layers of sellotape underneath that, and then back over the top, and then, so hopefully, that should be enough. Now, some of you might say it'll stick out from the river a bit, um, a bit too much. Well, I can always sand it off or file it off. It's not a problem. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be that deep. Um, three, four, five millimeters at the most, which I have to do in two, two or three separate pourings. So I'm going to start pouring it in now and I'll set the camera going so you can see me doing a little bit. Um, it is a new experience for me. I've not done this before, so I don't know how it's going to go. I hope it goes well. Um, but I do know I can't go too deep. It has to be a maximum of two mil. So that's hardly anything really and then you just let that dry for 24 hours and then build it up right so i'll set the camera at a different angle and then we'll see what it how it goes incidentally forgot to tell you i'm using this <laughs> okay so it's literally just tip on straight out of the bottle no mixing right let's make a start all right just bringing it back in i've discovered that there's a little twist top here which then makes the hole at the top there didn't notice that until just now um but anyway, you live and learn, don't you? Right, here we go then. So a little bit, little bit, little bit. Having to squeeze quite hard, I feel, to get it to come out. Down here, up by the black tack. So it is running in there now. And I'm just going to use a piece of old rusty rail <laughs> just to sort of prod it about a bit and just spread it out. Just sort of make sure it goes to the edges and then it's in there. There's a bit of a gap. I don't know whether you can see that at that point. I'm just prodding it. So there's hardly any, um, hardly any depth to it whatsoever, to be fair. But I don't want to go any deeper because that's, it's got a, it says it needs time to set. So I'll just try and get it level. The advert says you can put paint in it as well acrylic paint that is so if you want it murky you just put some colors of your choice in all right thought i'd show you this area here now 
Uh, you may have realised so I've modified this section and it's to give the impression that this part then just goes off into the distance. So I've built up foliage over here. So there's a slight break in it because obviously the perspective on that would be really sharp. And I didn't really want to indicate that from that point there. So this just helps to break it up. And then you see obviously the viaduct disappearing into the distance behind the trees up there. Um, what it's there for, um, whether it's a retaining wall, whether there's a road going past on it, it's up to you, it's your imagination. You can decide how you want. But I've also modified the scenery going along the back here, just putting a few extra trees in, things like that. Um, probably about as far as that point. Um, I may have to do something with that. That's the original back scene as was, as it continued around there. So you can see it's very similar colouring. Um, we'll see what happens with this section first and how much it gets covered up. Um, so if necessary, I'll come back and may have to repaint this to tie it all in and make it all look the same really so we'll just hold fire on that bit there for the time being okay right so let's have another look at this river right there we are so far then now i would like it deeper than that i thought i might as well go for another four to five millimeters on top of that i was thinking of that in its entirety but uh, no i think a bit more um, I did put it clear, as you could probably see from down here at first. And then I put some null oil into the last mix and just swished it around a bit. And it's darkened things up quite nicely. So another couple of layers on top of that, I think will be ready. And then obviously some Mod Podge to give it some waves, which I'll, I'll talk about later. Um, I'll probably end up just painting the end of this just to seal that edge up. So it's not quite so obvious, but uh, it's definitely getting there. And I'm quite liking the watery effect, but obviously there are some stones there and I do want those covered. Um, so it looks like the water's going straight into the pipe at the end. But you know, one step at a time. But that has taken probably six applications so far. You put it on and it seems to shrink downwards um, so if you put two mil on, it seems to set as like one mil. Uh, but um, it's going on and um, I'm quite pleased with that. I've got probably, it's hard to say, but I think of, oh no, it's only down to about there. Where my thumb is, about there. So I've only used about a third of the bottle so far. So I've got plenty left. And hopefully I'll have a bit more to make puddles and stuff elsewhere. But yeah, one step at a time. So that'll probably take another five or six applications the way I'm going. But I'll show you later now, okay? All right, next thing on the list is I'm going to start thinking about the catenary for this. Now, obviously, if I if you look down, there's like a step that sort of comes down and then into this piece. So I can't glue it to these railings because it won't be strong enough. You can see... I mean, they're strong, but it is quite flimsy in, in other ways. So I can't glue it to them. So what I'm aiming to do is glue it to the back piece here and also along one railing there as well. So hopefully they'll be quite strong. But um, I'm in the process of doing one one first print and uh, I'll show you what I need to... Well, I'll show you that in a bit once I've done it. Right, so that's the first draft. I've now got to go and check the measurements, make sure it fits, make sure the um, uh, arms are in the right places, it's high enough, etc., etc., etc. I might have to make a modified print, but um, we'll take it one step at a time. Um, that is going to be one half, and then I print the same thing again and then glue them back to back. So that should look an awful lot better once it's um, completed. So I'll come back to you shortly when I know the actual final sizes. Right, so this is one of the gantries. Somebody commented about how I do it. Um, I print two 
um, pieces. So there's a left hand and a right hand, and I flip it in Cura. But I always mark up each file R and R for right and L for left. And then I stick them back to back. Now you might say to me, why do you do a left hand and a right? Well, if you do that, then you get these bits lined up properly. If you <coughs> uh, just print loads off um, thinking you've got it center, I guarantee pretty much there'll be like a millimeter out. <laughs> And you think you've got it right and actually you haven't <laughs> it's like really annoying done their t-shirt hat video so anyway so i glue those two pieces together and then you'll see there would be like a gap running down the middle of each of that so i just use a little bit of filler just to go around just rub it around um i don't i'm not overly careful about that i just put it on and then rub it in i end up with something more like that obviously that's been uh, painted with varying brown colors uh, just to give the impression it's rusty but these remember these gantries are probably 50 60 years old um i think i think it was electrified in the 70s so you know that sort of time there is going to be about right um so you know they're not going to look the greatest of condition but uh, that's one of the uh, more finished ones there's two more just there and this is the one for the brick uh, viaduct, which goes on beyond the metal viaduct. It's the one that's going to go back behind New Mills Mill, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Anyway, you'll see them on the layout when I show you the reveal at the end. All right, catch you shortly. So there we are, that is pretty much the scene down this section of the layout, pretty much complete. Now, I will show you what I have done. Um, you may or may not be able to pick out, I've put a signal in there because obviously there is a crossover here and there would need to be a stop signal. Now, and there is another signal down there, which I'll point out to you in a moment. Um, neither are lit. They are literally just placed um, and I will wire them sometime in the future. And the reason I'm saying that is because it would be quite nice to get these Heathcote boards or similar type of things where the, the signals can be linked together and they work in sequence with each other. So that's my plan. OK, um, so you'll also may notice it is very difficult to see, but I've put one of those ramps on the track just there and also some boxes or a box just there as i have done at the other end i'll show you that so there's the signal and you can see the two boxes just down there now that's not the both the biggest thing obviously um, i have been talking about the gantries going into uh, dinting so hopefully if i can come back far enough You'll see these two have now gone in where the track separates and then we've got uh, gantries going all the way down and please be aware this is a representation because obviously the real thing doesn't have quite a sharp curve at this point and you might be thinking why have i stopped there and not carried on down there it's because this scene is going to be developed next and a lot of this will be covered so this this banking, there'll be some quite severe banking coming across here and it will be smothered with trees. So the idea is that the, the train will go round the corner and then just disappear behind the trees. I'm not going to put in a, um, a tunnel portal or anything like that unless I absolutely need to. If it's obvious there is a big open chasm just at this point, then I will cover that over again. But again, what I'm hoping to think of is that this part is covered as well and um, there's trees coming down. In fact, it might, I might have to put a tunnel portal in. We'll see, we'll just see how it goes, but I'm intending trees to be all along this section here. And as I've said before, most of this will be covered with a lift out section. And then obviously New Mills Mill will be the big centre point here. Again, smothered with trees and also the Torvale, the Millennium, Millennium Walk, which goes around kind of like that. And I'll talk about that another time. So you can see then those gantries were in 
now and they have all been um, sort of given a wash over with a very sort of rusty grey type look so that's those and of course I've been talking about the river as well now I've only just put a pour in that so that's when I said the the area is not quite finished this was one of the parts I was referring to because obviously um, that's going to take a little while to set um, it does need um, this area here sorting out because this land slopes down and what I'll probably do is just remold the black tack to be honest and then pack it with foliage over the top I think it might be just an easy solution to do that and um, obviously I need to put gloss modge podge over the top of the water itself and then blow some ripples into it with a straw um, I'll probably show you that at the beginning of the next video and then give it time to set a bit so a shot directly above the water itself so you can see it's murky but you can still see what's underneath and I quite like that effect to be honest with you now some people might say why don't I put a bike or a shopping trolley in there well it seems like it's the, the iconic bus on a bridge that type of thing and I'm deliberately not going to go there with that uh, with that on this occasion um, because how is somebody going to get down there with a shopping trolley and or a bike now there is a massive overgrown field here in the real situation and would somebody really walk all the way down here with a bike and dump it in the river down there it seems unlikely so and there are many many areas where there is not a bike or a shopping trolley or anything else dumped in the river um, and it is left as a natural area of beauty so i'm going to leave that um, the other area that is not complete is obviously this area down the bottom here where you've got the tunnel and also there is another panel to go in there and the tunnel portal itself point motors need to go there at the edge of that point and obviously at the edge of that point there because that that point motor is going to be buried when I do that tum tunnel and um, I can't afford not to have that um, switching if you like <laughs> anyway just a few views down this way so I'm quite liking the view down there now And leaving you with a shot of the reformed viaduct there. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And hopefully in the week. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right, take care, everybody. And I'll catch you shortly.